So me and um, Diddy, who is just eating some treats here, are back. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about pituitary tumours, which is a request I've had since um, publishing my health check video, which I thought was quite a good one actually, particularly whilst I actually have a rat with a pituitary tumour so that I can show you some of the kind of symptoms more specifically. Um, I'd rather I didn't, but it's one of those things. We'll live with it, won't we, dudes? So what is a pituitary tumour? Um, a pituitary tumour is a tumour on a very small part of the brain that's right near the bottom. Um, it's responsible for all sorts of bits and bobs involving control of hormones um, within within the brain and the rest of the body. So you kind of they get involved in growth, they get involved with reproductive systems, um, they get involved with all sorts, to be honest, um, with the pituitary uh, gland. So it's a very useful gland. It's also one that rats are very prone to getting tumours in. Um, most of them, it's likely that we don't spot. Either the rat shows some symptoms and um, we don't pick up on it or we confuse it for old age because they are quite common in older rats. Um, or we just don't see them at all because there's different types of tumours. You can get very small tumours that um, show no real noticeable symptoms. They may mess with the hormones a little bit, but there are no kind of obvious neurological symptoms. And um, you may get kind of bigger tumours and that's when you notice um, kind of the strange behaviour with the pores and, and the symptoms that are come on with the more obvious symptoms because they're pressing against the brain. So I think I read a study really recently that said um, for rats over 10 months, 38% will have pituitary tumours. Um, in, in females, that's much higher, actually. Um, I think once you're getting over about a couple of years old, um, the majority of females will have a pituitary tumour. And that's where Diddy comes in, really. Diddy is now 28 months old. Um, getting on towards 29, she's an older girl and clearly she starts to have some pituitary symptom, um, tumour symptoms which now I've read more on it um, I'm quite surprised just how many do have them and it's the type of thing you'd only ever found if you regularly post-mortem do rats um, it's quite an interesting one <laughs> she's uh, <laughs> having a bit of a bath aren't you miss so what are the symptoms of a pituitary tumour there is quite a lot. A lot of them on their own could be mistaken for other things. For instance, um, HLD, um, hind leg degeneration, so the weakness in the back legs, is quite often linked with pituitary tum um, tumours. However, it's also very common in old rats, so like Diddy has a degree of HLD. Um, you can, should have managed to get her to sit properly. She, she can't really hold herself very well on her back legs. Um, she kind of just trips and sli slides them around as you can see her doing here. Um, classic sign of HLD, she's had it for a while now. I don't know whether this is part of her pituitary tumour or not. Um, another common thing is blindness in one eye and Diddy is actually almost definitely blind in that eye. I don't know that she's got the most sight in the world in, she's probably got a little bit in this eye but the other <laughs> the other eye is um, kind of fairly, in fact if, if you actually look at it and I doubt it would show up on camera it's actually quite glassy as well um, if you look at it closely so it's not behaving normally. Um, another common thing with pituitary tumours is a head tilt. Now Diddy shows this off very well. Um, she, this head tilt is probably from an ear infection she had quite some time ago. I very much doubt it's to do with pituitary tumour but it's a, another classic symptom and it's one where you can easily get confused. Um, another symptom you quite often get is kind of thinning skin and that can also lead to thinning fur. Um, you get confusion, lack of coordination, um, particularly and probably the most classic pituitary symptom which isn't common with anything else is kind of like a stiffness in the front paws and this is quite hard to see so I'll see whether I can bribe Diddy to cooperate with a treat. Um, so if you give the treat, um, if you notice that Diddy is not, not big, she really wants the treat but she's really struggling to hold it in her front paws. I'll get a little bit closer. Um, and there's kind of a weakness and almost a, a kind of stiffness. She's just not managing to kind of grip it quite as well. Um, uh, she's gone again. It's gone again. I'm, I'm kind of half holding it up for a blesser. Um, this is kind of a classic pituitary symptom. In fact, if she does wash, um, you can actually see it very well when they wash again. They've just not got the 
the coordination in the same way. Um, what they can also do, which actually did isn't really doing, is what we'd call head bumping. So as you stroke the head, they will push up with it. Um, again, it's quite a classic symptom. You can actually see she does it sometimes, and that's to do with pressure in the head. Um, she quite likes it too. <laughs> She's a sweetheart, aren't you, it's. Um, so those are the main ones I can think of off the top of my head. Um, one of the things you do have to watch with pituitary, or realise with pituitary tumours, is because of where it is in the head, there is no way of fixing it. You can't have it removed. Um, anything you do is only about extending life and happiness for as long as possible. Um, this is particularly true towards the end, and pituitary tumours are a degenerative kind of disorder. The rat will get worse and worse through its life, um, and you have to make the call when to put it to sleep. Um, one of the symptoms that I didn't mention, which is one of the more unpleasant ones, is they can be prone to fitting um, and quite some quite violent seizures, particularly late on. They can, in early days, they can have what they call kind of petite mal seizures, we pronounce that wrong, um, where they kind of space out, zone out for a bit. But in the later stages, it's properly violent um, kind of fitting. So it's one that you want to kind of let them go before it gets to that stage. Oops, she's off. Um, Diddy doesn't believe in <laughs> kind of. Oh, there she goes, having a bath. Um, yeah, she doesn't believe in kind of behaving when she has illnesses. She believes she should do everything she used to be able to do to bless her. And that will actually govern when I make the call on, on when to put her to sleep because she will not enjoy it if she can't do things anymore. She can't kind of eat properly or play. She's not going to be a rat that I could keep on a soft diet. Um, currently, she's coping quite well, but I'm having to watch it every day to make sure that she's. Um, Still enjoying life, aren't you babes? So, so you're looking out for kind of the condition degenerating, but there are things you can do as much as it's a degenerative condition to in some ways reverse some of the damage. Um, it will then continue to get worse from that point, but you can slow down the decline. So there's two main things. Most pituitary tumours are um, prolactinomas, something like that. Basically, um, pro prolactin, which is a, a female reproductive hormone, in the main, um, which will kind of drive the growth of the pituitary tumours. It's why they're so common in girls and actually why a spade girl is far, far less likely to have them. <laughs> hey, Missy. Um, oh, hey, you girl. Um, so one of the things you can use is a prolactin antagonist, which basically reduces the amount of prolactin in the system. That can actually shrink, uh, shrink the tumour down a bit. Um, so it can re reverse some of the symptoms and then it will help slow the growth. Um, I've heard of cases of three to six months, even even longer than that with rats um, on it, where the tumour is a pro prolactin driven one. 75% um, of them are, so it's well worth a try. Um, the other main way of de dealing with things is steroids. So steroids are really potent anti-inflammatory. They do also lower the immune system, they're not a miracle cure but they are very, very useful when you've got a kind of tumour because they reduce the swelling of the surrounding tissue. So Diddy's currently on steroids actually, and it's perked her right up. She was um, a lot less lively, <laughs> bless her. I put her down to a bit of run around. Um, yeah, she was a lot less lively before I started the steroids and um, I'm gonna move her on to um, Galastop, which is basically a brand name for the drug Capical Globin. I'm really rubbish at um, pronouncing these things. But basically, that's a prolactin inhibitor, so I'm going to be looking to move her on to that soon and see how she responds. Um, it's very much a call. I don't always treat rats with pituitary tumours. It's a quality of life call. Diddy's very happy and is currently responding well to just like the initial steroids, which happen to have in. Um, so it's well worth trying with her. But I've had rats before where they've had like a facial abscess or they've been like really on quality life what the things life watch anyway, um, where I've just had them put to sleep basically as soon as they've discovered pituitary symptoms because it's not a nice <laughs> way to go. It's um, one of the things I hate the most actually in rats. Um, currently Diddy's coping very well and, and I'm happy with that, but it's, it's one to not take lightly, um, to not keep pushing the rat to the end because I have heard of cases where a rat's just started fitting and not stopped until they've got it to the emergency vet and the vet's put it to sleep. And that was like 35, 40 minutes. So it can be quite violent towards the end. So you need to be aware of that and you need to try and make the call. Um, 
but then I've also heard the cases of like rats living on the right medication for six months plus. Um, it's not always that long, they don't always respond to it, but perfectly happily and living kind of great lives. So it's not a complete kind of death sentence. Well, it will be at the end, but to be fair, rats have to die of something. <laughs> um, so it's one you just need to bear very much in mind and very much judge by the rat um, and how happy they are and what suits them. So those are probably the main things. The next thing to think about when you've got a rat with pituitary tumours is making sure um, they're able to eat and drink right. So at the moment, um, Diddy is perfectly able to drink. Um, she's perfectly able to eat dry food, actually, but she can't compete with her cage mates who are starving, apparently, because I don't feed them enough. Um, so what I do is like one every morning before I go to work, I take her and her skinny daughter who has um, a kind of kidney problem, permanent kidney problem, and they go and stay in my top part of my Ventura, which is like set up as a separate permanent cage. And they get a massive bowl of food with kidney friendly supplements in and various easy to digest stuff. They fill themselves, gorge all day. I come back from work and they move back in with the rest of the group. So they're still kind of bonded as a group. They still get to kind of operate in the big cage most like half half the day, but half the day they get to eat a lot as well, and that works well. Um, but Diddy can eat hard food. Um, as rats get more advanced and pituitary tumours, they lose the use of their paws completely. And to be honest, that'll be if when that happens to Diddy, she's she's uh, going to be euthanized. Some rats don't mind it as much it's it's very much a call you, you do know your rats and you do need to kind of check for their happiness and such but you can feed them wet foods they find it easier to eat that they'll have often quite enjoy tucking into some kind of cooked rice and egg or some kind of senior dog food and um, decent quality you know something something enjoyable for them and um, that's one thing to take into account and also bear in mind fluid because they have to raise themselves off often to use a water bottle so you need to make sure that they're able to hydrate themselves at quite a low level because they often kind of lack co coordination and lack the ability to kind of get to a water bottle. Um, Diddy has a little ramp to make sure she can get up to hers. Don't you miss? Yeah, a trouble. Um, other thing to bear in mind with rats with pituitary tumours, because of how it causes pressure on the brain, it can change the temperament. Um, I've had had some rats get kind of quite scared or ang angry at me. Um, I've had pituitary tumours. Diddy is not. Diddy um, is wonderful and thinks I'm lovely. But she doesn't quite understand how much pressure she can put on when she's grooming me anymore. She's quite a harsh groomer now, whereas before she was all licks. Um, now she kind of chews me a little bit. But it's in a nice way, isn't it, Miss? Good girl. Um, the early signs that I saw with Diddy, and it's one to kind of look around, is sometimes with rats you get a gut feel that something's not right. They're just a little bit fluffy. They're a little bit kind of porphyrin stained in places. I'll, I'll show you Diddy's underneath actually. So if you look under there, this should all, all be kind of silvery cream like it is around this area. But you notice underneath, sorry miss, um, it's quite pinky. And that's just a sign she's not able to keep up with her grooming as much. Um, and she's just feeling a little bit under the weather. So um, that kind of thing started happening. Um, I noticed her just not getting around as easily. And soon after I spotted the hands and I kind of knew what it was. At that point it was like, is it heart? Is it a kind of urinary tract infection? Um, our lot tend to get a few <laughs> urinary tract infections um, and they can just like make rats feel a bit crap. Um, let's face it, humans don't particularly enjoy them either. Um, so I tried various things and then, yeah, I, I, I began to suspect it was something neurological just because of the way she changed and the way she was grooming me and everything. And um, I, I'm pretty sure she has had a minor fit once when I got her out because she reacted like she was in pain for a brief period and then she was fine. Um, but for a, just, just for that second when I first pick her up, she was like really freaked out, which isn't Diddy and she hasn't done it since. So there's, there's possibly that kind of thing going on as well but it's all things for you to look out for. In terms of other things um, to think about, company, they do appreciate company still. There's a reason her, sister, her, her daughter goes up with her in the cage. Um, they also help groom each other. You do have to watch it though, because I found rats in the kind of later stages of pituitary tumours or neurological issues 
can get um, alienated by their cage mates. I think there comes a point where they, they, they must smell different or the cage mate must realise what's happening and sometimes that causes the cage mates to cluster around and look after them and other times they kind of like recoil from it and try and hide. I think it affects every group slightly differently. So when that happens um, they can quite easily get cold and kind of ungroomed and they, they need a little bit of extra care and actually to be honest when you get into that stage again it's one time to think about like euthanasia side of things. Um, I think that's probably the main stuff on it. I, I it's, it's not a good thing, <laughs> it's not a nice thing, it is one of my least um, well, maybe my most dreaded things that I can get in, in rats. Um, that and Zimbal's gland tumours. Stuff you can't do anything about is always um, bloody hard to kind of deal with, but it is one of those things you do deal with quite a lot um, over the years. So hopefully this is of some use for those of you that either suspect there's a pituitary tumour going on or are perhaps going through it yourself with one of your um, girls or boys. And I should add, boys can definitely still get it, it's just not as common as girls. So good luck and I hope this has been useful and um, did he say a quick bye bye to you.